So, we've spoken a little bit about this field of our being with its different amazing miraculous powers and how if we bring them all into togetherness we can experience our essence. Now this essence in the, in the Indian system is defined or described in different ways and one way that it's described is threefold and it's Sat Chit Ananda Sat Chit Ananda Three elements. Sat means existing. It's from the verbal root us, which is the verb to be. So, for example, the Italian and Spanish verbs to be have come from the Sanskrit. Essere or ser, they've come from this root us, which gives us the noun sat, meaning that it exists. Yes, here I am, I exist. So, so far, this definition of our reality holds good, yeah. I exist. Do we ever have the experience, I don't exist? No. We might think it, but the very fact that we're thinking we don't exist surely proves that we do, because how could we have any thought or experience at all if we weren't existing? So, sat, existing. Chit. Chit means consciousness. Am I conscious? Well, I'm having an experience and I couldn't possibly have an experience if I wasn't conscious, so yeah, that part of the definition holds good. And then the third part of this definition of who we really are, what we're essentially made of, Ananda. Now, Ananda often gets translated as bliss. But like many translations of Sanskrit terms, this falls a little short, I would say. Because Ananda has certain qualities to it that bliss might not necessarily connote or bring to mind in the listener. Nanda means joy. Ananda means other than joy, less than joy, different from joy, joyless. So Nanda and Ananda, but Ananda means a state that is always and only ever joyful. So Ananda is beyond the pairs of opposites. It's beyond the comings and goings. It's beyond the pairs of opposites that characterize, that characterize life. Up, down, hot, cold, pleasure and pain. It's beyond all that. It's wholly joyful. It's wholly satisfying. So, we said that in the Indian system, in the Upanishads, these texts that are an important foundation for yoga teachings, one way our essential nature is described as it is a Sat Chit Ananda. So, Sat existing, yes, check, I'm here. Chit, yes, I have to be conscious at least to some degree to have an experience at all. So, yes, but Ananda, oh, well. No, I don't wake up in the morning and experience reality as a feel of shimmering unity. I don't feel always and only ever blissful. Mm. So, what to do about this? Do I reject this Upanishadic definition? But it was starting so promisingly, such it. Do I reject it because Ananda it doesn't necessarily mesh with my current level of experience? Perhaps not. Because something rings true about it. Because when I contemplate and reflect on it, I cannot help but acknowledge that, yes, I have had experiences where I feel what I might term a blissfulness, a fullness. When I really get into something, when my when my very guts are into it and my heart's into it and my mind's fully focused on it and I'm using my body and my emotional intent to do the thing, it's like time falls away. I have no desire to be anywhere else. And whatever I'm doing becomes deeply fulfilling. And this is the state of yoga, or one way that we can experience yoga. Whole system total engagement 
in a balanced, easy, harmonious way. And that feels wonderful. Now, when we have those moments of whole system integration, and it feels whew, amazing, wonderful, beautiful, that feeling of feels so great is not accompanied by a feeling of strangeness. It's not like everything comes together and I feel, what is this strange feeling of oneness? <laughs> no. When everything comes together, I would say it's more like, Ah, oh. oh, it feels, it feels like home. It's familiar. And so is the idea in yoga. Yoga is about inviting unity. Where do we come from? Now, there are many ways to answer this question. If we get asked this question, when we meet somebody, generally we understand conventionally, they want us to tell us where we came out of the womb, where we were born. But where do we come from? Well, we came out of the womb. And before we came out, what happened? Where did we come from? Our mother and father came together. We were born from unity. When they came together and that fateful sperm and that fateful egg joined, the first cell to form, so I understand, was the heart cell. And from that initial unity, then multiplication and division and expansion happened, and then this amazing diversity came into being. But there's the idea that in the heart of every cell, we know what unity is. We know what it feels like, and really we long for it. And so there's the idea in yoga that all of this miraculous diversity is really the opportunity the arena, if you like, to come back to that recognition of that oneness, that fullness, that wholeness. And so in yoga, one of the essential teachings is that the pairs of opposites, hot, cold, pleasure, pain, gain, loss, all of these, they're completely normal and natural. They're part of life. These poles or pairs of opposites, and the idea in yoga is to be steady amidst all of that constant whirling wonder and change of life. Because yoga is practical. It came from the observation of nature. And what is nature? What is life? It's a heartbeat. It's a breath cycle. And so we could say life is pulsation. We could also say that life is cycles. And you can see that what I'm doing with one hand, pulsating, and what I'm doing with the other hand, cycling, really, they're two ways of representing the same phenomenon. There is an up cycle, an expansion. There is a down cycle, down cycle a contraction. And in yoga, there's the idea we work with the whole spectrum of experience to deepen our connection to the state or place of balance of the center. So the idea in yoga, all these different experiences, they're just means to help train ourselves in what it means to be balanced and centered. <laughs>